Well, greetings, students, and welcome to the presentation on Islam in India. I call this presentation affectionately the clash of civilizations, because that's exactly what it was. And I had a difficult time coming up with an essential question, but my essential question is pretty broad, but I think it applies pretty well, is how did Islam impact India? <laughs> well, here's the thing. When I read this section of the text, I had questions. I had to figure out this huge gap between where we left India in 1181, as in History 1181, and how we deal with India in History 1182. So I wanted to put together this presentation which fills in some of those gaps. And then when we're done, you'll be ready to dive into the text. When the Muslims poured into the Indian subcontinent, they found a totally foreign world. The Muslims were horrified by religious idols such as Kali that you see here in all her glory, scantily clad in severed arms and heads, standing in triumph over the submissive Shiva. The fact that she was worshipped was shocking enough. The fact that she was a female and was worshipped and scantily clad was too much for the pious Muslims. They were determined to rid the world of such imagery and idols. This objective was gravely offensive to most subcontinentals. Such differing perspectives between Muslims and Hindus would lead to centuries of conflict that continue today. But while many were offended, other Indians were drawn to Islam's message of social justice. Think if you were a pariah, an untouchable, which included most of Indian society. The Muslims assured you that you weren't to blame for your existence. They undermined the concept of karma. They told you that the higher castes were treating you grossly unfairly. This message was warmly embraced by many poor Indians. So Islam continues to have a home on the subcontinent. According to the Pew Forum, India is the second largest Islamic nation in the world, even though Muslims comprise only 15% of the population. That shows you how large and impactful this country is. Well, like I mentioned earlier in History 1181, we left India around 500 CE. The Gupta Empire was the last time India was largely unified under Hindu rule. After this empire collapsed, India was affiliated by culture, but not unified politically. The subcontinent was totally vulnerable to outside invasion. In 610 CE, Islam burst forth on the world scene. For the next century, Islam spread rapidly from its base in the Arabian Peninsula. By 700, the Umayyad dynasty became focused on securing the massive prize of the Indian subcontinent for Islam. They succeeded in securing the Indus River Valley. The Indus is situated in modern Pakistan. Pakistan is the third largest Muslim nation today, and it, it will surpass India in the future. But it is almost entirely Muslim. The conflict between India and Pakistan has been continuous and inspired by this religious difference. It led to the partition of the subcontinent in 1947 at the conclusion of British rule and is persistent today because of border disputes that have been made a lot more serious because both nations now possess nuclear weapons. The Muslims were not successful in using the Indus as a base of operations and capturing the strategic and significant Ganges Plain. But after 500 years of effort, around the year 1200, the Delhi Sultanate was created. A Sultan is a local Muslim ruler. His kingdom is called a Sultanate. For the next 200 years, the Delhi Sultanate consolidated Muslim power. But in 1398, they were hit by a tsunami by the name of Timur. The sack of Delhi in 1398 is one of the world's most dastardly acts. Timur was a Tartar, an offshoot of the Mongols who roamed the arid wastes of Central Asia. Him and his boys were just mobile killers. They had an empire in what would be modern-day Afghanistan and Iran. 
but they had zero interest in occupying India. They were merely after gain and eliminating rivals. Over the span of five days in December of 1398, the Tartars laid waste to Delhi. Sultan Nasir ud Din Mahmud believed he could defend his city with armored elephants. Timur, who'd literally been around the block, was not spooked. In fact, he decided to spook the elephants. He loaded camels with firewood and straw, then lit their loads on fire. As the camels ran in terror toward the Delhi defenders, the elephants, seeing this massive wave of fire coming at them, turned and, and sprinted back toward their defenders. Defenders were left in total disarray. What came next was holy slaughter. After the battle, Timur executed 100,000 captives. The city was left in shambles, as you can see in this image. So now it's your turn, people. You need to dive into the text and read about how Islamic rule in India will recover and then briefly thrive after the sack of Delhi. Familiarize yourself with Akbar, Aurangzeb. Also read about the Rajputs and the Mughal Empire. Research these topics if the textual description is lacking. Good luck. You're going to enjoy this unit.